made a post yesterday about vibration dampening. Um, it raised a lot of questions. It would take forever, probably, for me to type and probably just raise more questions. So I'm going to do a quick video and show you guys what I did. This is the casting. I know somebody asked where I put the epoxy. Uh, this whole thing is full of epoxy. This side isn't cured yet, so I'm, I'm leaving it alone. This side's had uh, about 30, about, about 40 hours, I guess, of cure time. So it's, it's still not totally cured, but um, I, I wanted to come out last night and, uh, and see what kind of vibration I could pick up and I couldn't pick up any, which I was surprised at. I thought it would vibrate a little, but um, couldn't find any. And we may find out that it, it vibrates differently under load. You know, I don't know. I'm not a vibration expert. Uh, I'm just reporting the facts as I have them. Anyway, this is uh, aquarium gravel, four to five millimeter aquarium gravel, mixed with some granite dust, some glass blasting media, and about five percent, four and a half to five percent epoxy mixture. It was really dry. And we were concerned that it wouldn't stick and it wouldn't stay together, but it's it's actually it's quite hard. So it really doesn't take as much epoxy as you would think. In fact, I bought uh, eight gallons of epoxy. These are this is a two gallon set, and I think I started about here. I have used almost no. I haven't even used a quart of epoxy, and I've actually cast it, done a few test castings out of that, those jugs, but. Anyway, so not very much epoxy. Also, uh, if you need to make wells for screws, there's a screw down in there that I need to be able to have access to later on. Um, PEX pipe, water piping, works really good. The epoxy will just barely stick to it. And if it does happen to hang up in there, stick in there and you can't get it out, you can uh, take a drill and uh, a 5 8 bit, and it will, uh, it will cut almost all the way through, but not quite. And leave just a real thin liner inside that hole, and then that liner will pull out really easy. Anyway, moving on. So I did some vibration testing on this again last night, and I got pretty much nothing. The only vibration I can pick up now is, is off my surface plate when I bump it. It vibrates slightly because, you know, it's, oh, well, you can't see it, but it, surface plates are only suspended by three points. Anyway, now I'll go show you the transducer and how I measured the vibration. Okay, I know somebody last night mentioned uh, an iPhone app for vibration sensing. I don't have an iPhone, I have an Android, but they do have a similar app. It works fairly well, I, I gotta say. Um, so, you know, if you got nothing else, take the case off your phone and uh, set it on your on your machine. Probably put a paper towel under it and then put some weight on top of it. Not a lot, maybe eight ounces of weight. And uh, so your phone's touching the, the material really well. And uh, it, it'll measure vibration, but I, I did it a slightly different way. So this is a piezo transducer. It's very sensitive to sound, vibration, pressure. Um, I made this little hockey puck thing to put all of it in. You can buy these for about 30 bucks. You can buy some very expensive vibration uh, sampling equipment. I don't have millions of dollars or thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars to spend on things that I'm going to use one time in my life and then probably never use again. So I built this. This cost me about five bucks. Uh, it's full of glass media, so it wouldn't interfere with the electronics, and it's it's heavy. Uh, if it weighs nothing, it, it doesn't pick up vibration as well if there's no weight to it at all. Anyway, so this table, which is um, 32 by 18, and it's uh, three inches thick. Is suspended or balanced on a single one, two, three block underneath the middle. I found that's the best way to get vibration out of it, is to only suspend it in one place. Also, when we did the table, we took an eight ounce aluminum weight and dropped it 12 inches. We repeatedly did that until you know we, we collected about 10 samples of data. This is not gonna be nearly that scientific. I'm just gonna demonstrate how I did it. So Got the piezo transducer here, going into an analog to digital converter, which I like to call an Arduino. Um, the Arduino then plugs in via USB. And let me unlock my computer and we'll get started. Okay, here we are. This is a, kind of a MATLAB kind of thing. This comes with a visual, um, um, 
what do they call it? Uh, Atmel Studio. Sorry. Anyway, this is a, a graphing plugin that you can use for. Uh, if you guys don't program AVRs and American controllers in general, you probably don't know what this is. I have a, a, a Windows application that, that runs that will log the data out, but none of it's very user friendly because honestly, I was just going to use this one time. And they'll probably never use it again. But anyway, so if I take this uh, mallet handle, I'll try to get both of these together at the same time, and tap the table, and I'm not going to tap it real hard, we see vibration data. Now, I'll stop the scroll so I can see how long it vibrated. Okay, I ended up with about three and a half seconds of detectable vibration which is about what I can hear audibly. Uh, it uh, no doubt vibrated probably slightly longer than that, but, but that's what I can hear, and that's what the sensor picked up. Now, I know I have the sensor on one corner. Uh, I could check all four corners. I could check the middle. I could, you know, turn it over. I could get data points from different places. Uh, when we did the base over here, I had the transducer in the middle. It was on the other side because this was upside down, balanced on a one, two, three block here. Um, but I did it in the middle. I did it on the four corners. Um, the middle seemed to be the, the best. There's ribs that run uh, across here every uh, six inches. And between those ribs seemed to be the best place. But there's also a rib running up the center of this whole thing to try and give it some uh, stability. So, you know, I don't know where the best place would be to measure the vibration, but I know that I can put the sensor on here now, and I can put it pretty much anywhere and tap it, and I get nothing. Okay, so just for, I guess, repeatability, I put the transducer on top of that, and I guess we'll see what happens here. I'm going to just tap around on this, and we'll see what we get. The only thing I'm picking up is the initial impact. I'm just not getting much. Okay. Um, I got, um, I guess, about a, a tenth of a second thing. Let me see. Let me do some quick math here. So I'm thinking. Okay, from 41.93.5 to 41.9.5 or 94.0, that's a half second. There's five ticks between, so I guess about 200 milliseconds. I mean, it's a really short, it's a really short pickup. I mean, compared to what I was getting, which was in the five second range, you know, I'm, I'm really happy. So anyway, that's how I did it. Um, if you want to build your your own transducer, feel free. They don't cost that much to build. About five dollars. And uh enjoy.